In the last episode, I demonstrated a basic but vital technique for communicating between a parent and a child. But what about other forms of communication? Maybe even sibling components communicating with one another. Okay, well, we have to do something slightly different. Now, a quick note, in the past, in view one, you had abilities to broadcast and dispatch events. But that got kind of tricky, especially if you wanted to notify, for example, if this coupon needs to notify another coupon, you would do things where you would have to dispatch an event and have it bubble up to the root instance, and then the root instance would broadcast its own event down to the sibling. And it was, it was really kind of this weird V-shaped technique to notify sibling components. But instead, uh, in view two, those are now deprecated. So we're going to use a simple event emitter like this. We'll start with the basics, and then I'll show you maybe a nice API you could use uh, in your own projects. So we could always say a new view instance. And as we've learned, any view instance has the ability to listen and emit events. We emit using dollar sign emit, and we listen using dollar sign on. So when the applied event is fired, then respond. So if it turns out that every view instance has access to those basic event structures, maybe we could create a root view instance and then even call it something like event. Now we could do something like this, event.event applied. And again, don't forget, you can pass through any data you need as the second argument, but we, we just don't require that in this case. Okay, so now on any other component, all we have to do is listen for an event on this particular instance, like this. We'll say, how about this? When this is created, we'll say event.on applied, then respond somehow. And again, we'll just say handling it. Okay, let's give it a shot. We run it, we tab off, and there we go. Exact same thing. But now we're not limited to parent-child communication alone. Any component can both fire an event and listen for other events. And that's why we're using this shared event instance. Now, this works really, really well, and I think you're going to use it all the time in your own projects. Now, if you don't like the, the dollar sign emit and dollar sign on uh, API, you could always just wrap that up and, and make it similar to anything you want. For example, you could say window.event, and let's just build up a new class. Here we're using the ES2015 class syntax. Just remember to, of course, uh, compile that down using Webpack or Browserify or uh, Rollup. Anyways, maybe we could do something like this. When you instantiate it, and we're doing that instantly, we'll create a new view instance, and we'll just save that to view. And then our API can be anything we want. Like maybe we want fire and listen. Okay, well, we will fire an event name and pass through data that is not required. And listen, we'll listen for an event and then trigger a callback function. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of just an adapter. We're just wrapping up the, the view event interface. So we'll do something like this. When you fire an event, we're just going to delegate as before and call $emit and pass through the event and the data. And then listen is just a wrapper for view.on. Yeah, it's just a little wrapper here. You store it in any file, you assign it to the window object, and you now have a perfectly valid event dispatcher. So if we were to try that again, we can now say event.fire and event.listen if you think that feels better to you. Anyways, give it a refresh, type, tap away, and it all works. So that is example number two for communicating between components, and you'll use it all the time, trust me.